I have so much to do and I don't even know where to start. So I'm going to start just by cooking some chicken breasts in the Instant Pot. All you do is pour like a cup of liquid and three chicken breasts in there and cook up 10 minutes. Well, some people use water, I'm gonna use chicken broth. And I'm gonna season the chicken with salt, pepper, and I don't know, garlic and onion powder, paprika, or something like that. And have some cooked chicken cubed up and set inside some containers. And then I'm gonna brown up some ground beef. I wanted to cook more, but it's in the freezer and I'm not gonna deal with that right now. So at least I'll have two. And then I'll just freeze the cooked ground beef. Ground beef can be so easily used for so many things. Lasagna, spaghetti, tacos, sloppy joes, salt beef. chicken is a lunch meal prep. It's a very easy chicken I make for my husband. It's in a video. I'll post it below. I also meal prepped a bunch of chicken last night on my Instagram and it's also from another video, a Sandra Lee cookbook video. And it's the pearl onion chicken thigh video. I'll post both those videos and a timestamp that you can find both of these recipes. And these are two of the four that I cycle through when I meal prep my husband's chicken and rice, which is what he has every day for lunch. And then a bunch of rosemary. I think I'll crush up the rosemary in my mortar and pestle instead of using my hands. Rosemary is kind of a kind of hurts my hands when I grind it together. If you don't, if you've never crushed your dry herbs like oregano, you just rub it really hard between your hands for time. It really opens up the flavor. You can just smell how fragrant it is as soon as you start grinding it. The only other things you need are some cannellini beans and stewed tomatoes. One thing I do that isn't necessary is I use my little chopper and I put the stewed tomatoes in there and grind them up a little bit just because my husband doesn't like super big tomato chunks. And I also chop up the Kalamata olives in this also. <laughs> I'll put these chicken breasts in for less time. All right, we're back over here. I'm gonna pour in my chopped up. I can't find my Kalamata olives, so we're just gonna do it out. It really is a nice touch with a fresh few but... Beans. I've got a pot here for some minute rice. These are done. This water is boiling, it's just for minute rice. Okay, I'm gonna salt the water for the rice. It's just minute rice. Uh, you boil the four cups of water and then you pour four cups of rice. And then once it comes back up to a boil, you gotta put the lid back on it. And once it comes back up to a boil, you just shut it off and it's good to go. Very easy. I love me some minute rice. All right, this is back up to a boil. So you just stir it around. Turn it off. That'd be easy. And then let that, you know. And then we're gonna use some glass dishes, put some rice in it, and put this chicken on top. This chicken is really cheap too to fix because it's chicken thigh. And since you're adding beans, it makes it 
you know, go longer, stretch farther. You know what I'm saying? I need to sharpen my knives so bad. Despite being overcooked for some reason, when I've cooked in the past, when I've cooked chicken breast in the Instant Pot, even when I overcook it past the 160, it still is kind of juicy for, for whatever reason. I don't know how it happens, but I'm pretty impressed with how the Instant Pot cooks chicken breast. Let me see. Yeah, very juicy. I got a huge pack of these foil bins with a cardboard type lid from Amazon. And boy, are they sure handy. You can just write the contents right there on top of that lid. Oh. Oh. I'll have the link for those in the description. Here I am just scooping that minute rice into some glass containers. That amount of chicken made barely three lunches. I've got more chicken thighs though that I'm thawing and I will make some more of this. I looked high and low for my Kalamata olives. I usually chop those pretty fine in the same little chopper I used to chop the stewed tomatoes. And then I just sprinkle some Kalamata olives on top. It's a really nice touch. And then I usually finish it with some parsley. And I'm just scooping up the beans here, filling up the rest of the dishes because even if the chicken is short, the beans will fill you up. Lots of protein and stuff in those. pound of beef, depending on its fat content. Usually cooks up to just under a pound. Could be about 0. 0.8. Close enough. All right, I have one and a half pounds cubed cooked chicken. Two different things of cooked ground beef and I've got two Tuscan lunches, one in the fridge. Hi there, it is the very next day. I'm back at it again today. I didn't get to do it this morning because we had dentist appointments for the little kiddos, but I've, while they were eating their snack before nap time, I was able to get out a bunch of stuff and prep the lactation cookies. I have my butter kind of softened. I used the microwave. I don't uh, typically like using the microwave to soften butter for cakes, but for lactation cookies, um, the, it's just pure survival right now, so I don't really care. After I prepped everything yesterday morning, I was just done for the day. My dishwasher is empty, so I can just load up all of the dishes. I'm just gonna use a fork. It wants me to whip the butter and sugar and all that, and I'm, I'm just not, I don't care if it's a super dense, weird textured cookie. I'm literally eating these for the purpose of lactation, not for uh, the enjoyment of having a super delightful cookie. The recipe for this is in the description. Don't know if I said that already. In here we have butter, coconut oil, eggs. Let's do our sugar. I'm going to be filling up two pots with water. I'm gonna be working on a couple of different recipes at the same time while I make the lactation cookies. Like while I'm waiting for the oven to preheat and while I'm baking them, I can get these pots going. Pasta. Last night we had just a skillet meal, the bagged Bertatelli or whatever the brand is. So I'm gonna to need to wash this pan. I have a bunch of pantry items on the countertop because my pantry is plumb full from all of the meal prepping stuff I purchased. And then for these recipes, I'm gonna need ground beef. I prepped, I browned some ground beef yesterday. I could use one of those, but since I'm feeling up to it, I'm just gonna brown a new one. I thought it. And I actually need almost two pounds. Of ground beef for these two recipes, but one of the recipes has pepperoni and the other one has Italian sausage in addition to the ground beef. So I'm just gonna stretch the ground beef between the two. I'm just 
chopping these up real fine because I'm not a fan of huge chunks of mushroom, but it is a nice umami and a, a nice filler. All right, and they both want <clears throat> some onion. So I'll just use this to chop up my onion also. Oh, it feels like it still was frozen. We'll work, we'll work through that. Let's just throw the onion in with this ground beef and the mushroom, why not? We'll just make this one huge meat concoction. olives and that one will have Italian sausage. So we'll have different flavor components a little bit. I'm supposed to mix this in with the macaroni that's over there. Okay. Oops. This pasta is huge. Okay, so this one wants me to add one 26 ounce jar of three cheese spaghetti sauce. Well, I've got or cheese here. And it wants an entire jar of salsa. Stirring the tomatoes, sausage, garlic. I didn't put any garlic in either of these. Wow, 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 wow. Spaghetti sauce, salsa, and pepperoni. Why did I not put any garlic in any of these? Wow. I'm going to add some garlic powder to these. It asks me to use two cans, but I really don't think that I need two cans of diced tomatoes in here. Only one package of penne, and they want three jars of sauce and a jar of salsa and diced tomatoes. That is not happening in this house. So, what is going on? This is so saucy. Why would they want so much sauce? They want an, an entire additional thing of sauce. That's wild. I'm not doing that. I 100% should have another thing of penny to put in here. Do I have another thing of penny? All right, I feel like this is way too much. We're gonna have a mishmash. I have more elbow, but I don't have more penny. So what I'm gonna do is put, how much elbow did they want? One cup uncooked macaroni. Wow, they only wanted a cup in here. I'm just gonna put some elbow in here. Like, what is going on? It's just unbelievably, it's just unbelievably, unbelievably saucy. I don't, know, I don't understand. I don't understand at all. All right, that looks more 
my speed to so this odd happening. We're gonna put the meat mixture. We're gonna add that to, to over here. Both of these want so much cheese. I just don't get it. I'm gonna use the rest of this Italian and mozzarella. I think this one wants mozzarella too. are so cheesy. We are not huge uh, cheese people. And we're not huge on like super saucy things, but here we are with an abundance of cheese and sauce. What does it want me to bake it at? 350? Cover and freeze one casserole. Cover and bake the remaining for 350 for 25 minutes. Pasta mash. And then pepperoni, mac, and cheese. I think baby's gonna come in like 10 days. I don't know, I got a feeling. So we're gonna dump the flax, ground flax seed and brewer's yeast, the flour, baking soda, baking powder, salt, and cinnamon, all the oats. I can't find my imitation vanilla. It's somewhere in the pantry. So we'll just, I've been really liking that imitation vanilla. You're supposed to add all this in different steps, but it doesn't matter. We got the pots filling up behind me. I can wash them. I'm gonna mix these all up and bake them. Wait, I think this recipe told, I think this recipe said one egg and one egg yolk, but I put two eggs. What you're seeing here is I'm not about to roll out 6,000 cookies. I just decided to push it all into a 9 by 13 and bake it in the oven. And then you cook a cookie, a chocolate chip cookie-ish thing, to the internal temperature of about 175, 180, 185, depending on how well done you like it. And that makes a cookie. So I just stuck it in this pan, put it in that oven for 350, and watched it for, I think it took about 15 minutes to get to be about finished doesn't tell me to but I always like a little bit of salt on my chocolate chip cookies so I add some super flaky salt it looks like a lot but it's very thin very flaky and uh, I'm sure it'll be just fine
after standing a little over an hour in the kitchen, my back was just totally done. <laughs> That's how I have to end up walking because uh, of my SPD and my severe back pain when I'm at the third trimester of pregnancy. Just what happens. I'm gonna pull these cookies out, cut them into squares and then freeze them. I'll tell if they're done with my thermometer. Check the internal temperature of a cooked cookie. And then, let's see. All right, I'd like to make the nut bars, the breakfast sandwiches, the breakfast burritos. I need to make some Alfredo for the chicken broccoli shells and breakfast biscuits. A couple other things too, but... Um... All right, I need to sit down desperately. My bag is out. And we will finish the rest of the meal prep in the next video, okay? I'll see you guys then.